start now. Hello. Today we're going to play more Yogg. We're going to get more reps with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Um, I'm not a thousand percent on this card. It might belong in the sideboard as Graveyard Hate slash good against Murktide, good against some decks, but it might be too awkward to play in the main, but we're going to try it. We're ready for Rhinos this time. We have... Engineered Explosives and Filigree Silex in the sideboard. I was slacking on these. I was slacking, so... I'm actually going to cut the Engineered Explosives and I'm going to try Necroplasm. We're gonna just going to give it a shot. We'll give it a we'll give it a test for today. We got to demolished by Rhinos yesterday. Twice in a prelim. So, we'll try having a little extra Rhino hate. And we have our Agatha, and should be pretty good. Um, we're cutting Shieldred. We're cutting down Evolutions because we're playing Agathas, and we'll see. Constructed. Modern League. Let's go. Perfect. A Cauldron. Unfortunately, we don't have a Ramp card to cast it. On one, we can't go like one, two, play, play. Uh, our opponent's going to five here. So like maybe if they thought sees us take these, we could just play this early. Which would be pretty cool. Alright, so our opponent's at five. Uh, not a best, not, not the best start for them. I wonder if they're troning. Of course. Alright. Our hand is not very good against Tron, unless we draw a dork. Oh, no. All right. Well, this hand is way too slow to play against Tron. Way too slow. I just have to... We just have to hope that they have nothing. That they go, like, basic here. As opposed to perfect Tron on three. All right. That's, that's a start. That is a start for us. I'm just going to fetch my land so I can have six here. Um, really, 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 really want to draw one drop. What's up, Burnt? Really want to draw one drop to go wall roots into thing. That would be just... I think we're just going to die to them because they're on the play. Just going to die to them because they're on the play. One drop. Perfect. Um, so we just get a... Forest, and we have to play Wall of Roots just to just to get as much mana as possible. And now they get the Tron land at the end of turn, and we're so dead. We're so dead. Uh, I guess we could go Cauldron. We can go Strangaroot Cauldron, or we could play a Grist. I think I want to save the Grist to kill whatever. To kill their Karn or whatever they play. So I think I'm just going to go... One, two... Play Strangaroot. Shock this in. Play Cauldron. And we'll set up for a Yogg next turn. If we would play Yogg this turn with Wall Roots... It wouldn't really do very much. We need Yogg plus things on the board. So we'll go from here. Ursa's mind. All right. So they have all the mana now. So here comes the rings and the carns. Here comes the rings and the carns. Mm -hmm. There's Karn. Uh, I guess I'll exile uh, Ancient's rings. It's completely irrelevant, this activation. Doesn't do a damn thing. But... Cauldron not so good in the face of Yogg, but we used our mana efficiently, and now we could go Grist, Minus, kill this, do more stuff. They are tutoring for an artifact. Crazy. Who would have guessed? Probably the ring. Maybe the ring. We can win the game if we draw a Young Wolf. 
So I have one, two, three, four to play Yogg. Then we go land Young Wolf. So we'll have Yogg, Young Wolf, Wall Roots thing. Then we can bounce them for quarter calling on their upkeep. So if we draw Young Wolf, we can win the game. The Stone Brain. Oh, motherfucker. Oh, mother ever. Uh, yep. We cannot win the game next turn. Let's... Let me export the current list we're playing. Let me fix it. Um, Stream Decker. Sorry about that. I forgot. Upload new. Browser upload file. There you go. This is the current list we're doing. Sorry about that. Deck. So we lost our Yawgmoths. We lost the heart of our deck. Uh, we could still Strangroot kill this. And then play Grist. But we're kind of going to get wrecked by... I guess we don't really have a choice. One, two, Wall of Roots. Or play this. I guess we should just grist kill this five them. We should honestly probably just play this so that if they destroy our board, tack Karn, tack Karn, we, if they O stone here, we can actually gain some life. They just have nothing. Well, that's pretty weird that they have absolutely nothing. Yeah, they're done. They're done doing all that weird stuff. All right, let's plus you. Let's Agatha eat this. Put a counter on the Blood Artist. And attack. Blood Artist murder. What the hell is in their hand if they have five cards, eight mana, and they're doing nothing? That's a little scary. Uh-oh. That card's scary, too. Reveals Urza's Tower. Yeah. We're about to get Ulamogged. Yup. Cool. Coolamog. What? Why wouldn't they get rid of the Strangaroo guys? That's weird. All right, we have no ways to deal with this. This doesn't do anything. I guess we go one, two, three, four, play Agatha's plus, and we go one, two, Cauldron, and then we go begin combat, begin combat, attack, attack, attack. I think I want to save this and block stuff. I think I attack with these. Alright, so we're going to go Agatha's. Exile this. Put a counter on one of these guys just for more damage. Just for more damage. Pink. Alright. Alright. It's going to be Dry Diver Beatdown time. So we're going to block, block. We're going to like gang block this. The ring. That pre presents an issue. The ring perhaps presents an issue. Uh... Let's get the the Dryad Arbor. We're just dead, I think. I think we're just dead. Because we can't kill them because of the ring. And they have they have taken and gotten rid of our Yawgmoth. So we're just dead. Actually. Actually, if they attack with a Yawgmoth, we can gang block here. Block with everything. So they'll die to the triggers first. Right? So we'll make a bunch of blockers. We're going to remove a counter from this so we can 
ping them with wall. We could ping them with this. Okay, okay. We're technically not dead because we block, 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 block. They'll take six. I mean, they can just assign damage to one if they're smart, but. Plus. One. Let's see if they know about that. I guess we'll put this. We'll keep this one so we can alt. Then we'll Agatha this Grist. And we'll put a counter on uh, this insect. So now we'll go create a token, create a token, create a token. Okay. Now we yield to the turn. Now, if they attack, we put all our blockers in front and hope they don't know the rules of magic. We have to hope they don't know the rules. Block. Block. Block, block. So, <laughs> we're going to sack this and kill. You'll do the turn. So this is going to be a valuable lesson to chat here. So just click it. You just click them. You can just, you can just click one over and over. Pretty sure that works. They knew the rules. It would be the same thing. <laughs> It'd be the same thing. Yeah. Our opponent knows the rules. Um, yes. We could only kill the creatures with a plus one, plus one counter, though. So the creatures with a plus one, plus one counter wouldn't die to the young wolf. Wouldn't die to the activation. Uh, I should have sacked the wall of roots and... Okay. Well, our opponent knew the rules. In paper, our opponent assigns all damage to one creature. So you can assign all the damage to a single creature and then somebody doesn't die. We stole that win because our opponent didn't know the rules. Which kind of sucks, but what can you do? We played sweet and there's not much we could do about it. You know, I think Agatha's a little slow against what we want to do against Tron. Yeah, you're so confused. Okay, so... In magic, if you're attacking, right, you can assign all your points of damage to a single creature. Yeah, but how to do it on Moto? Um, there's a damage step. There's a damage step. I'll, I think I'll, next time I get a chance, I'll try and show you guys. The problem with Agatha's Fulminator Mage is... It's very slow, right? In order to set that up, right, you need Fulminator Mage plus Agatha. You're looking at five mana minimum. You're looking at five mana minimum against the deck that's turn three, you know, going off the top. Right? On turn three, they're generally killing us. You know what I mean? All right. So hopefully we can... 
slow them down so the necro works oh perfect this means necro is gonna work right because they won't have their fourth tron land until before we can necro them it's kind of complicated uh i don't know i don't know why they say it doesn't work i did it the other day in a draft my opponent had something and i didn't want to kill it so i did it in a draft the other day uh bu, 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 bu. we'll take the scrying stone sylvan scrying all right so mine so this is their hand necro is spicy before fulminator but like let's compare yeah like necromentia is all right so they're what are they going to be able to do next turn they're going to be able to O Stone or the Ring. Wow, that's actually sick. They're going to play the One Ring. They're going to be immune, and then they're going to be able to play the Tron Land. Holy shit. That sucks for me. Alright, so now they played Talisman Resistance. They played the Mine. There's the power plant. Now they're going to play the O stone. I guess in theory they could not draw the, the land this turn. Oh, that's, that's very tilting. Um, I guess... I guess we're just going to go... Sack this for Yogg. We'll just get Yogmoth. You'll do the turn. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully they just miss. If they miss off this land, they're going to... If they miss, we win. If they hit, we lose. That's pretty much this game. That's pretty much this game. If they hit, they win. Oh, perfect. They hit. We're dead. Because now they play O-Stone and we're just dead. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying to We're trying to get some people with Cauldron. Well, you trying. It's not working, but we're trying. So now they can O stone. We have to turn off auto yields. Because they can play O stone and pop it this turn. What's up? Seven mana. Worm quill. Oh, that's really good for us. We can beat this. If we just. We can probably beat this. We cannot beat that. That we cannot beat. Uh, Yeah, that's pretty good draws from our opponent. Um, I probably have to keep this thing around. Pretty good draws, pretty good draws, pretty good draws. And a relic? Oh, okay, yeah, sure, get a relic too. Sure. Sure, why not get a relic? Alright, well we can thought seize the O-Stone out of their hand. Which is, it's by now it's too late. Now we're just fucked. We don't even get to use the Necromancia. Oh my. I think we're just dead. I don't think we're coming back from this one. Alright, Necromancia failed us. That one stupid ramp thing to get them to four was crazy for them. That worked out so well for them. I think I want a Force of Vigor over a Wall of Roots. Right. So we have turn one. This hand just doesn't... I mean, it has everything we need to win, but it's a little slow. Turn one, Halfling. Turn two, Halfling plus Young Wolf on land. Turn three, Yogmoth. With Young Wolf in play. Uh, there you go. I guess I could keep. It just sucks the Halflings can't cast 
the Strangaroo Geist. We just lose out on mana on, with this guy until turn four. So, like, we, I know we're losing out on mana. That's what sucks about these guys. That's why I miss Birds of Paradise. But then when I play against Murktide and this thing says uncounterable, I feel like a genius. Alright, so let's crack. Get Overgrown Tomb. Play Halfling. It would be ideal if we could draw a land that's not the Besaju, and we could save the Besaju for hitting a land. Uh, another land? Okay. So, double green into double green. And we'll go halfling, young wolf. Halfling, Young Wolf. Attack. So next turn we'll have Yogmoth, And if we draw another land we'll have Besaju. We'll probably, honestly... Oh my goodness, this worked out perfectly. Alright, so we're going to go black, black, black. Let's be cute. Uncounterable. Uncounterable Yogmoth. Just try and counter that. Okay. So now we will attack with the Young Wolf. Attack. And then we're going to draw step, kill the tower. During our draw, during their draw step. And the reason we do a draw step is because we want them to have the highest opportunity to draw all their basic lands. Right? Hypothetically speaking, they could have two forests in hand, and we just gave them a chance to draw the third forest so that this doesn't work. Get out of here. Get out of here, stupid! That's why we always draw step effects like this and feel the ruin and stuff like that. Okay, so let's go to our turn. AFK a minute. AFK a minute? Well, shit. AFK means Enchant Wordle. Enchant Wordle. Let's name Verdant Catacombs. It is rare, it has no subtype, it's from before this, it's more than zero mana. So let's try Cephalid Ambassador. It is six mana, it's not blue, it's from before this. So six mana from the old days, huh? That's pretty cool. Let's try Catacomb... Dragon. Okay. Six mana black. It's not a creature. It's from before this. Yogmoth's bargain. Getting closer. Alright, they're back. So we'll come back to it. Um Alright, so we can win here now. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pay... Alright. So, we're going to... What are we going to do? What are we going to do? How do we do this? We go one, two, play the young wolf. We go one, play the young wolf. And then we go one, two, play the strangaroo. And then we go choose a twin target. Okay, sack this. So now, if they pop the relic and they draw a dismember, right, we could still pop off. Swim. Swim F1. Thank you for the subscription. Thank you very much. This is very kind of you. Okay, so the reason we played these first, so if they crack this relic, right, then they draw a dismember. Boop. They kill our Yogg. We could still combo in response. They pop the relic. Yo Young Wolf dies. 
All right, so now we draw our card. We have a land drop to make here. Okay, again, not having blue mana, or not having colored mana is hurting us. Pay one life, choose what's one target creature, done. Sack the young wolf. We are vulnerable to the dismember right now. But they don't have it. So now we just bounce sack. We are looking for, at the very least, a thought sees. At the most, a. At the most, we're looking for quarter calling or the blood artist. We're looking to kill them. Gotta find a thingy. I don't have a cord yet. Or artist. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. All right, so that was a rough match. I'm sorry about our opponent, like, not knowing how to assign damage to one. Um, I would say that we would have we should have lost the match, but because we lost game two. But if we would have been on the play in game two, it would have been a lot different because we would have been able to necromentia them before that ring came down, right? So we would have necromentioned the towers or whatever, and then it's a very different game because they have to play with regular mana, right? So uh, that was rough. Sucks it had to go that way. I feel bad doing that kind of stuff. Like you only, I only win the game because my opponent didn't know how to click a certain thing on Moto. So that feels bad. All right, so this is the perfect hand if this dork lives. If this guy lives and we turn two Grist, okay, and we're playing against, oh, all right, well, shit. Our dork's going to live, which is a good thing. Good news, bad news here. Good news, our dork's going to live. Bad news, I might have to Grist minus and kill a, a thing this turn. If they go Stoneforge here, get Cauldra, I'll have to Grist minus and sack this and kill the Cauldra. Yup, here comes Cauldra. They might actually just get the, the thing because they have they have this, so we might just be dead. If they just get right, because they have Ink Moth, they just go land, activate Ink Moth. What? Why would they get this? I mean we're stone dead here. We're stone dead. We're just dead to this shit. I could kill this, but then they just kill us with this. I have a feeling they have culture in their hand already. I mean, how do we win this game? We win this game keeping their board clear. This is how we win. They don't have to, right? They activate it. It has flying. They attack. I can't block it. They boom, hammer it. We're dead. Right? If they have a hammer and a land, we're dead. Okay, cool. That was fun. Uh, Force of Vigor. I think I want Thoughtseize to hit the Cauldra. Uh, we're shaving stuff. We're shaving stuff. Bowmaster's kind of okay against them, but not great. Like, it's only good against certain cards. I think we're going to play three Thought Seizes so we can Thought Seize a Cauldra. On two. Alright, we're going to play it like this. We're going to play it like this. 
We're cutting Court of Callings because we don't need a cord for Yogg. Once we get Yogmoth in play, that's going to be our win con. We don't need a cord for the Blood Artist, right? Yeah, they just cast the hammer. The, the Yeah, they just cast the hammer after blocks. And we can't block since it has flying. We honestly probably don't want Agatha's. Because, like, our dudes aren't really going to die. But we'll, we'll keep it for learning. We'll keep it for the sake of learning. <laughs> we just want all our accelerants. We want to accelerate into Yogmoth. And then use Yogmoth to clean up the board. We don't want the cords because we don't need to cord for blow mat blood artists. We just have Yogmoth, have an undying creature, keep them from doing anything. Would you like to play first? Yes. Okay, this hand is very good. This hand is very good. Turn one. We're playing, obviously we're playing this one because the other one does not make green mana. Uh-huh. 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 We're going to let them pop off a little bit here. Jeez. Because we're going to thought seize them and then we'll hold up Force of Vigor. We'll thought, okay, all right, calm down over there, opponent. Um, what's in your hand? Colossal hammer, colossal hammer. Well, you know what? You know what? Okay. Um, I suppose we'll hold the young wolf here. Just for this. All right. So two hammers gone. We have Force of Vigor up if they decide to get frisky. They make a good draw. It is possible that we want to double stone rain them. Go one, two, three, four. Put these two here. Uh, I guess we'll do this. Play this. And we'll swing for one here. I kind of think we blow up all these zeros, right? That denies a mana. So, yeah, let's just do that. Just keep them off the mana. Esper Sentinel. Now I'm in the Yogmoth waiting room. Now I'm sitting here patiently waiting for our friend Yogmoth. I'm waiting so patiently. Um, attack you. Attack you for three. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, can we draw Yogmoth now? We're just waiting for Yogmoth. Waiting patiently for our friend Yogmoth. I would accept our friend Bowmaster here. But he's not here. Bowmaster's not here to help us. So we'll just attack with our friend. We're just going to hold up Force of Vigor. So they have one card in their hand, which could be Surge of Salvation. Which would be incredibly annoying. But if they have Surge and they have Hammer, then we lose. We don't lose. We have a bunch of chump blockers. But it'd be... It'd be quite annoying. We're just waiting for our Yogmoth. As usual, we have entered the Yogmoth waiting room. So that means we are going to draw. That means we're gonna draw a Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth. That's how this works, right? We draw Urborg. Okay, I'll take a grist. I will happily take a grist. Boop. Uh, I think we just kill this thing. We could just go Young Wolf kill this. And then we'll be able to hold up the activation for the rest of the game. 
All right, let's play the young wolf here. Let's sacrifice the young wolf. Kill this thing. Let's attack. And now we have our force of vigor just sitting here all happy. Happy, happy, happy. Shocker Nation! Any card for the you want to try on Yogg? We're trying them right now. We're trying Agatha. We're trying Agatha's Soul Cauldron right now. Uh, this is the big one. Cauldron seems good. It's very good, but there's a lot of weirdness to it. It's it's sort of inconsistent. Shocker Nation, thank you for the 19 months. I so it's a little inconsistent in how it works, what, you know... Because sometimes you just die with it in your hand, or, like, you don't really have anything in the graveyard. I want to take... I want the fourth thought to use... Thought to use I can't even speak. I want the force, fourth thought seize in the deck on the draw so we don't just get dumpstered. Yeah, are there kind of... <laughs> Augur of Autumn hype? Listen... Augur of Autumn is like a lot of cards. It's like Augur of Autumn, Hepatra, you know, um, that stupid spider, Shildred. They're very powerful cards some of the time. But other times they're just not Yawgmoth and not combo pieces. Right? Where it's like all you want is Yawgmoth or combo pieces. Right? That's like the simple way to view it. I just want as many Yawgmoths as I can get, and as many combo pieces as I can get. And when, the more cards you play that aren't those, you know, the harder it gets. This hand is very good at not dying, but not so good at Yawgmothing. So we'll see how this hand plays out. This hand should not die to bullshit. Very keyword. This hand should be immune to bullshit. Like when we just died on turn three. On the draw. We died on our turn two. Yep. Alrighty. Okay. So, worst case scenario here is Stoneforge gets Cauldra. <coughs> <coughs> Do we want to kill this? Mm. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to kill it before it gets the mana. So they don't have two mana. So it should set them significantly back. Maybe that was just too greedy. But now they only have one mana, so hopefully they can't do anything too crazy with it. Knock on wood, hopefully. We did two for one ourselves, but... I think given the nature of that, and given the tempo of the play that we just made, I think it was okay. Like, just think if we let this resolve and they go turn two... Like, if we let this resolve and they go turn two... If they have a Stoneforge Mystic with Cauldron in play... We're very far behind tempo-wise. So that's why I made that play. Thought sees What's going on in there? What's going on in there? Okay. Pure Steel, Pure Steel. They chose... They chose not to surge. They chose not to surge the Saga there. That's kind of weird. Why wouldn't they... Why wouldn't they... Why wouldn't they do that? Why didn't they surge their saga? Very weird. Alright, we're going to take the Colossal Hammer. Just in case they draw land. We'll take the hammer out of there. Then we're playing High Arcs. Then now uh, we're smashing. I imagine they, they should have just surged. They should have surged a power. So this is their hand. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. I'm kind of surprised they didn't surge. 
Yeah, exactly. I agree. I agree. Being on once is kind of weird. Okay, so now we have entered our favorite spot. Yawgmoth waiting room. Where we just sit here and hope that we draw Yawgmoth. Before they draw a planes. We have to draw our Yawgmoth before they draw a planes. Seems reasonable. It's time for... It's time for Dried Arbor Beatdown. Dried Arbor! Ooh. Uh, this chord's for three. This chord's for six. Six chords for three. That's not enough. Next turn. All we have to do is survive till next turn, and then we can Yawgmoth. <laughs> now, this is an action-packed game. Let me tell you. i tell you what. It's an action-packed game. This is the game where the action is. Action Central right here. Uh, yeah. Okay, S for Sentinel. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so next turn, we don't win the game, but we unofficially win the game. So this is their hand. We know three out of four. So now we crack this, get our Overgrown Tomb. Okay, now we go to our turn. Now we want to draw a one drop or two for our quarter calling. Bowmasters would be the sickest because we could just get to ping this. They pro black it, and then we can start killing stuff. <laughs> Aha! Tome of Urborg. Okay. So, green, 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 green. Doop, 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 doop. Oh no, they get to draw a card. Oh no. Oh darn. Oh gosh darn. Okay. Oh gosh darn, they get to draw a card. I'll take a Yawgmoth. I will minus one, minus one, give her ruins. I will sacrifice Dried Arbor. I will minus, minus one, minus one, minus one, give, give her ruins. I will sacrifice Ignoble Spy Arc. They will then do that. I will then do this. And their board is gone. Boop. 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 Your turn. Your turn. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Excuse me. And now we win the game. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, yeah. Save targets. GG's. All right. All right, one, two, turn two, turn one. Uh, this hand is just kind of got a lot of clunk in it, but we are on the draw, so I'm going to keep it. This is kind of sketchy. This is sus. Trium. It's a very sussy keep, for sure. For sure this is sussy. Yay. Yay this not being Birds of Paradise. Yay. We draw land, everything's okay. One land, please. Uno land, por favor. I mean, that's okay too, right? Because we go one, two. And now we can cord for Dryad Arbor. All right, all right. You are not a land, but I accept you. Not being a land, you still get accepted into my 
Okay, one, two. Beanstalk! Okay, okay, okay. Oh boy, we're about to get furied. Oh boy, here comes the fury. Return up to one land. Oh, we're not getting furied! Um, okay. Minus one. Cord. Boop, boop. Oh, yeah, neat. Neat. What about the victims of those Furies and Solitudes? Though it's not neat for them, it's horrible. Okay, can we win the game? One, two, three, four, five, six. Can we win this game? Uh, I think we can. Minus one, minus two, strangle root. Minus one, minus two, strangle root. Evolution is one, two, three. Gets us Yogmoth. Ah, brain hurt. Brain hurty. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Gets us. We need these two in play. Let's do. Let's just do that first. Let's get. Let's get Stranger Geist in play. Now we've played a land, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can cord for a Yogmoth next turn, or we can go one, two, three. It's pretty good. One, two, three. Elge Evolution, sack you. And now we're getting Yogfather. Now we get Yogfather. Now, we can cord for a young wolf. One, two, three, one, young wolf. Then we'll have one, two, three, four. We won't be able to cord for blood artists, but we can get infinite mana. So let's just swing the Strangerogeist Geist at the Ren and Six. Attack Ren and Six. And then let's pass the turn. Okay. And we will give them a chance to do stuff. All right, they're going to beanstalk us. One, two, three. Okay, so I kind of feel like we sack the Dryad Arbor, reset this, cord for a young wolf, and then just fill up our hand. Let's make sure that... Let's let this resolve... Let's let the target come in. Have them target Yogg. Alright. So now we'll kill the one target that's weak to... We're going to kill the one target that's weak to Red and Six. And we're going to go... Sack this. Sack this. This is going to be so annoying for a while. Just didn't play my Beanstalk. I get value from pitching Solitude. Just annoying. This is going to be so annoying. I don't necessarily think that this solves the color of the problems of four color, but it's just so annoying. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So now we go one, two, three, four. Done. We're going to get a young wolf. And now we're going to sack. We're just going to fill up our hand. We have another Yogmoth here. So we're mostly looking for uh, a land drop. Right? We're just looking for a land drop. Actually, we're looking to make them concede, apparently. Actually, we're just looking to make them concede. Neat value engine beanstalk. No, so, like, I don't know. Um, this does seem powerful. Obviously, it's powerful. I don't know if it fixes the problems of this deck. Uh, it's certainly going to be annoying as fuck. I was bringing Thought Seizes for Solitudes and things. And what are we cutting? We'll cut a High Arc on the draw against Ren and Seven. We will cut... 
I imagine we should bring in Haywire Might if they're going to be... They're probably also going to be playing Leyline Binding. So by that logic, we should probably bring in Force of Vigor as well. We'll have one of these and one of these. Uh, we'll cut a Strangler Geist. We'll cut this. We'll shave all this stuff. And we'll probably shave a High Arc or two. Just because we don't want to be on the draw against Ren and Six and just get dunked on by that. Yeah, I that's where I'm at too. Am I convinced about Cauldron? Nope. Nope. No, I am not. Because the problem is, Cauldron, like, only works when you fail, I guess. We're just gonna, we're just trying it. We're just trying to get reps with it, you know? Like, we did have a sweet game against uh, Tron with it, but it didn't really do anything. It let our Blood Artist attack for one more damage. Okay, so we have Thoughtseize, Bowmaster, Dork. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. The question is, are we turn one Thoughtseizing? That is the question. Or do we go... Or do we turn one Halfling... I guess if we get a black here, we can go turn one halfling. I guess we could go forest too. Save some life. We could get a forest. Then play a halfling. Then next turn we can go Urborg. Thoughtsea. Or you can go one, two, wall of roots. No, it's not going to work. Whatever. Whatever. I have a halfling. They're probably going to kill my halfling anyway. Fury. Oh my god. Alright, we're just in spew mode because we have ephemerate. Cool. We're just going full spew. Oh no. We're just... We're not ephemerating it. We're just literally full spew. Yo, opponent's like, yo, there can be only one. Listen. Listen, friend. Just because halflings are from doesn't mean there can be... Oh, that's too stupid. That's too stupid! Um, What can we do here? We can... We can thought seize them to prevent them from having an, uh, a thingy. Or we can hold up Bowmaster, or we can play a Wall of Roots. Um, I feel like we can hold up Bowmaster. If they just play it... Uh, let's just hold up Bowmaster. Right? If they swing, we can kill one with the Bowmaster. If they play... If they play What's-His-Nuts... We can kill one with Bowmaster. Alright, this is fine. I mean, it's not fine, but it's fine, right? Attack with the Halfling, attack with the Halfling, attack with the Halfling. We're going to be sneaky. And we're going to have Yield until next end step on. So if they crack the fetch, we'll be Yielded. See how that was instant, right? It instantly... Oh, they didn't fall for the bait. They didn't fall for the bait. Okay, so we're going to go... One, two... Play Bowmaster. We're going to have to grist this thing, so let's shoot that. Um... Alright, what's the best play here? Just Gris kill this. We get dominated by... Uh, we get dominated by Veil of Summer. We basically lose the game to Veil here. Veil? Yay, no Veil. Sick. Alright. Alright. 
So they probably do play Omnath here, but we get to draw. We get to. What are we doing here? Leyline binding on my Bowmaster? Sure. Uh, it'd be pretty shit this game. I mean, maybe if they kill the Gris, we could draw the Cauldron and start doing cool stuff with it. What the hell is this? Four mana white legend? Oh, boring. So boring. You're leaving my Grist alive? You have no respect for the power that is Grist, and I will make you pay for it. You will pay, and you will suffer. Alright, uh, let's get a forest. No respect. No respect for Grist. That hurts. Alright, how badly are we going to get wrecked by F -F Fury? How badly are we going to get wrecked by Fury? Omnath. Oh, that's so exciting. Oh, boy. Kill the Dryad Arbor. I'm just going to get to binding the Grist. All right. We're going to have to work hard to win this game. Got a lot harder, friend. Oh, what? What? Okay. What do we want to do here? What do we want to do? I guess we can go Yawgmoth Thoughtseize. I guess if we are going to Thoughtseize, we're going to Thoughtseize first. So if they have a Solitude, we don't get wrecked by it. Uh, let's take the Ring Reset. Yeah. One, two, three. Play Yawgmoth. The question is, do we need to kill this? Or do we just plus and keep this and draw two? That's the question. The question is, are we plussing, shooting this, shooting this? Um, is it plus, draw two? Or is it minus, kill this? I don't think we win the game by minusing our resources and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the ring against Omnath. Right? I think we will lose if we give up, if we go down. I think we lose if we go down here. That's the play, I think. And I think I'm going to kill one, two, going to kill a halfling. Should I kill a halfling or should I kill Omnath? I think I'm just going to pass. We're just going to pass for now. And then we're going to do... Yeah. We needed to thought seize a couple turns earlier. Maybe I was supposed to hit this, hit this, to try and draw a green card Force of, Force of Vigor to kill the Leyline Bindings and get back two creatures. Maybe I was supposed to do that. I don't know. We just got to make it to our turn, right? What the fuck is this? What the shit is this? Okay... All right, I guess we're going to go. I don't think we're winning this game, friends. I don't think we're beating uh, this winning this game. I don't think you can't really beat the ring early. We should have thought seize this ring away, but I didn't. I guess we could still draw some cool stuff. And I think we're going to go with four Force of Vigor, the two, fo both Force of Vigors. So we can kill Bindings plus Beanstalks. We could still hit a Besaju here, and then we could Besaju this, get back this, and start killing stuff. Wish they would play a little faster, though. Like, there's no reason to be waiting on this. Knacker, 64. Thank you for the 11 months. It's very kind of you. 
Oh, we have to have a chump blocker for this. We're so dead. We're just so dead. I guess we'll kill this thing. Then just let our grist build our thing die. All right. We're not beating four cards next turn. Just not beating the ring. Fun ring gaming. Good luck trying to mid-range a bunch of these decks now. Um, they're going to exile our other stuff. Let's cut the Agathas. We want to try hard to win. Let's bring in the Force of Vigors. They're just going to exile our stuff most of the time, right? So, I guess... Okay, turn one, turn two. Okay, okay. Not the greatest hand, but it should prevent them from doing anything too busted. Turn one, Thoughtseize. Turn two, Thoughtseize. Turn three, Grist. All right, let's take that Renan six. Get the F out of here. All right. Nah, Decromentia against this kind of deck, it's like, it's too hard. They have way too much value, right? They just have so much different value that they can get. Breeding pool shock. Halfling. Okay, that's annoying. Very annoying. Um, let us thought seize again. Let's take the Omnath. Then we'll play Misty, Yield. Now they are on Solitude here. Can you help us? Prince Bowmasters? Yeah, that's the solution to Ren and Six. Bunch of 1-1s. One Alright, so this is going to get this, and then this will get a Forest, and then we'll play this to plus. And we'll have to chump block the Endurance. Oh, cool, they drew it to Fairy. Well, that's annoying. All right. Um, let's get this yield. Tavari goes up. Okay. Let's get a forest. Forest here. Um, forest. This is why Force of Vigor, like Force of Vigor, just looks really stupid right now. It just looks so out of place, so terrible. That's why I generally hate playing cards like this. But to be fair, if it was Agatha's, it wouldn't be doing very much either. So... I want to try it first to destroy Teferi. Because then they just attack and kill Teferi with this. Right? This is just one card. I think if we set ourselves too far back on resources, we put ourselves in an impossible position. Because they're going to grow exponentially and we need to kind of keep pace with that. If we don't keep pace, we're going to fall behind and die. Like, if we kill this, then our Grist is assuredly dead. Grist is our only hope here. Like, we can Eldritch Evolution, we can get uh, we can get Dryad Arbor here, and then we can Evolution the Dryad Arbor. But that doesn't really... We could get a 2-drop, but they have Endurance. We know they have Endurance, we know they have Solitude, so we don't really have that many good plays. So, they'll play the Endurance here, and then maybe they Solitude the token to try and kill the Grist, and then we can fetch the Dried Arbor and save it, jump here, and then we'll have Grist saved. And we're just waiting for Yawgmoth, right? That's all we're doing. But this Force of Vigor looks so bad. So bad. Looks terrible. No Beanstalk, right? No Beanstalk, no Leyline Binding. Just Omnath. Gross. So we know their hand is this Triome and this. And then they're going to go fetch land. Oh, they don't have the fetch land. Oh, that's so bad for them. They don't get to just dunk on me with the Solitude. All right, so this block's here. Um, I guess I can, well, I probably have to just jump. Probably have to just jump. 
All right, so we'll get Dryad Arbor here. All right, so what are we going to do? Besage you? Oh, we're just so dead. Um, see, we can kill this. But the problem is they have the Solitude, right? So, like, if they have another blue card and we go minus here to kill this and they just Solitude this, we're just toast. Maybe I'm supposed to draw with Peatland here. Look for another dude. Well, that's not terrible. Alright, let's sack this to kill this. Sack you. Sack you. Kill you. It's not bad. Now we play this other Omnath. They minus on the Omnath. Bounce the token, then they kill the kill the Grist. That's not great for me. Maybe I don't play this. Because they'll just bounce it and then kill my guy. That's not good. I can't do that, right? Or they just Solitude it and kill my guy. That just doesn't work. If this was Agatha's, then we could, like, do that. If this was an Agatha's, we would have had this in play, and it would have been a very different game. But I think we're just going to get outvalued by them. Cycle the Triome. Okay. That goes up. Why didn't they, why didn't they attack with the halfling? I guess they don't want it to get bowmastered, even though I have a Teferi in play. I guess they're going to use the halfling? I don't know. So they still have a solitude in hand. Okay. One, two, wall of roots. One, two, play this. No, I don't think I'm going to play Comet. I don't like my game exploding. I don't like my game exploding. I don't want to play Comet. We're in trouble here because they're going to solitude this, bounce this, kill this. But we have no... There's nothing we can do. We could evolution, sack this, and then they're just going to solitude it. We could get a Yogg here, but we just get wrecked. So we have to just, you know, get wrecked here, which kind of sucks. Um, we're just going to get wrecked by this value engine. We were not able to establish our value, so this is why Force of Vigor is so questionable. Like, sometimes, imagine if we had it in the last game, when they had double Leyline Binding on our dorks, we could have just won the game. But now we just have it, and it looks atrocious. Yup, and now they kill our guy... They have four cards in hand. We just got destroyed. Just thoroughly destroyed. This Teferi has gotten so much value for them. Alright, so we have to draw a Young Wolf. We have to draw another Wall of Roots or something. I don't know what we can draw. But this evolution is not looking great. Halfling. We can evolution it into a Gris, but we're just dead. We're so far behind. Um, I think we're just dead. Just dead. That was unfortunate. We got demolished. Like, Modern is a huge wide open meta, and you're not just playing against the ring. You're playing against... Burn, you're playing against Prowess, you're playing against all the, you're playing against Saga, you're playing against all these, hey, thank you, 2i, 2i, very kind of you. Not great, I don't know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Alright, so let's play this. So like, if you're playing against only ring decks, Blood Artist is a little bit worse but you can still just kill people on their upkeep but modern is this very wide open format and blood artist is just 
better against the old wide open meta. In my opinion, which could be the wrong opinion. Uh, one, two, wall of roots. Crack. I don't really want to shock myself here. Let's go one, two, wall of roots. Oop. All right. Good luck, Ragavan. Have fun. Have fun, Ragavan. Have fun. Monkey. Monkey. Barrier. Established. No monkeys allowed. Monkey barrier established. No monkeys allowed. So now we can exist in a monkey free zone. Where we will not get hit by monkeys. I'm so going to get hit by a monkey this game. Legend Shredder. Well, <laughs> that one gets through our bullshit. That one gets through our bullshit. Pretty, pretty good. All right. Um, How do we want to do this? Question is, do we want to give them a connive? What's up, Ryan? This is our first question. Do we want to give them a connive? I feel like giving them a connive right now is no bueno. So let's just do no connive. Right, we don't need to connive them. Especially this early, right? We don't want to connive them. So we're not going to dump our hand out. Slow and steady here. If they want to connive, they have to spend the mana on their turn. Which means that they'll be shields down and less likely to counter our spells on our turn. So we don't want to give them free connives. But we do want to sack this Verdant Catacombs and get the, the shocks. Yeah, so now if they want to attack, they have to attack for one. So they're holding up Counterspell. Oh, wow. Okay, all right. Do you like Cauldron? I don't know. I haven't really played it enough. Sometimes it's crazy. It just seems... Honest answer is it seems a little inconsistent. Like, imagine if we drew it right now. It would do... It would exile their graveyard and keep them off Murktide. Okay, so it'd be good right now. <laughs> Cauldron. Well, um... Do I play the artist and swing? Sure. Artiste? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel that way too. I think I think that Cauldron is like good versus Murktide, good versus some decks, and just not even remotely feasible against other decks. Okay. So we get a little wow you here. See? I just did a point of damage that I would never ever do with Zulu Port. Right? If this was Zulu Port, they would be at 19. Just free point of damage. Free damage. Alright. The reason they probably block like that is because they're trying to fill their graveyard for Murktide. That's probably why they threw away that Ragavan. Also, what the hell is Ragavan going to do against Double Wall of Roots? No, no. No, I spent a lot of time last night with the Storm deck, and I went 0-4. I went one win and four losses against Storm, uh, with Storm. So, I had to readjust my schedule. I had to readjust the deck. The problem I had was... If someone played a main deck Graveyard Hate, like turn one... So, I turn one Dark Ritual Voidwalker and I literally couldn't win. Because the loop I had was Tendrils. So, now that I have Empty, I should be a lot better. Empty main. Boink. Alrighty. Alright, I'm gonna swing this into this. We're gonna swing. We're godly trade. Alright, now I'm going to play Halfling. They made an effort to kill our Halfling last turn. We're gonna sandbag this. 
Usually I don't sandbag, but we have so much mana. And, like, I want them to think maybe we have Bowmaster, right? Usually we're, we're not, I'm not a sandbagger with this deck, but I think I have to be in this situation. How many called? We haven't put a call. We put one cauldron in play. Ugh. Merktide doing Merktide things. Us not having Yogmoth. So they chose to put a Merktide into the graveyard as opposed to getting a Merktide with this expressive iteration, which tells me they probably already have a Merktide in hand. All right, they played the land, and then they're going to kill the Delighted Halfling. So that way they can hold up Counterspell and then counter my Yawgmoth. Boy, I wish I had Bowmaster here. Dragonlord Freya, thank you for the 13 months. Thank you, thank you. Bowmaster, give him the little, give him the love tap with the Blood Artist. Alrighty, and now they're holding up Counterspell. Forward 18. We can't attack anymore with the Stranga Root. Okay, so we can save this. Or we can walk it into the counterspell. We know they have counterspell. They've deliberately killed two of our halflings. We could save this for a turn that we draw Yogmoth. Play Ban Bean though. The Bean Sock is so. That's so obvious. That's such an obvious little thing that everybody's going to be trying. That's kind of boring. Elemental suck, suck. Um. So let's see. We play this. It gets countered. That doesn't really do anything for us. So I think I'm just going to play the Urborg and I'm going to try and sandbag this for a little bit later to a turn when I draw another spell and I can try and double spell. I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't think I'm just casting this into Counterspell now. I think that's extra bad. I think I need to sandbag this a little bit. We're at 18. We have some time. Unless they're just going to draw Expressive Iteration every turn, then maybe we don't have time. We'll maybe play the Beanstalk stuff later. But it's kind of like... It's just, do you want to play Omnath, Four Color, The Ring? You know? Do you want to see me play Omnath, Four Color, Soup? Or is that just kind of boring? Well... Ah... Uh, this back has a preordain. I think preordain brought this deck back. Because now they're like, oh, I have a sorcery. So now it's easier to get delirium. We have to draw something good here. We need to double spell this turn or we're just dead. Oh, good. They have... Alright, well... They probably have two counter spells of this. They've gone through twenty literal twenty five cards in their deck. Now just full attacking. All right. Okay, so let's draw another threat so we can double spell that matters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can go one, two, minus one, minus two, play Wall of Roots. Minus one, minus two, play Grist. This is going to get counterspelled for sure. Okay. So they kept one on, they put a Dragon Rage Channel on their graveyard. Okay, so this gets countered. Now I have one, two, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we wait till their upkeep, we can play around spell pierce. But if we do it now, we get rock we get rocked by spell pierce. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We get absolutely rocked by spell pierce. So if we if we wait, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we get killed by another thing, but I guess I'm going to swing the Strangerootgeist so it doesn't look suspicious. 
We'll swing the Strangaroo Geist. Okay. That will pass. If they crack this... Alright, so... I guess I don't want to get wrecked by Spell Pierce, so I'm going to do this now. Uh, one, two, three, four, bang. I don't want to give them an opportunity to draw more counter spells. They have three cards in hand. I don't want to get spell pierced. That sucks. We're probably dead this game. They had too many counter spells. We took too long to set up. We put took too long to put a threat on the battlefield. We need to turn two or turn three a threat to deal with this. We also need endurances to beat this kind of shit. Very difficult to beat this deck when they have the proper time to set up and just get a handful of counter spells. We're taking nine here. Uh, yes. I'm going to remove a counter from this wall of roots so I can ping to stay alive potentially. I'm going to remove a counter. Oh, I already did this turn. All right, so here they're going to play a giant Merc Tide. And they're going to say, haha, you can't kill me. In one draw step. Giant Merc died. Yep. Okay, so what is the draw we're looking for? We're looking for Grist or Yogg. Well, they're just going to go double Merc Tide. Alright, so we can kill them with a Yogg Moth. If we draw a Yawgmoth, we have a chance of killing them. Evolution, Yawgmoth. Actually, if we draw... If we draw Agathos, it would be pretty sick, too. Uh... Oh, my goodness. The next card. The next card. We draw this, we lose. We draw this, we win. What a world. What a world. Oh well. Okay. Uh, endurances. Scavenging uses in. I want two of these. What do you think about Cauldron? I don't know. We haven't really got a good chance to play with it. Let's cut a Young Wolf. Let's cut a Wall of Roots. I've been less inclined to play Court of Calling because it kind of gets wrecked by spell pierce which some of these people are leaving in so it's kind of hard to say so i think i'm gonna cut another court of calling i just don't want this to get pinged by a spell pierce so like we're gonna try and play this like lean mean deck all right would you like to play first yes okay turn one turn two yep we'll keep we will keep it's good it it is important to play from different angles. And you crushed me in that game. All right. Um, oh, no. Let's go. Forest. Hayak. Um, if we can, we're going to turn to Grist. I doubt that this thing's living. It's going to get mergulated. Yep. Murderlated. I want to hide the Yavamaya. Smash. Smash the Yavamaya. Or smash the Strangaroo Geist. So now... If they play a threat, we'll kill it with Yavamaya, or we'll go Grist, kill it. What is the one blue here? Nope, we're not doing that. Uh, so, now we're going to yield. Um, Do we want to jam the Grist into the counterspell? I think... I think the answer is no. I don't think I want to do that. I think that... Playing the Delighted Halfling is just probably fine. Right? If we just jam this, they just counter it, and that's, like, really bad for us. 
let's have them waste their mana this turn. Alright, they're going to counter this Delighted Halfling. They're going to counterspell this. If we don't play our land, they might be more likely to think that this is important and they'll counter it. Sure. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm glad we threw away a Halfling as opposed to a Grist. Right? Grist is the precious. Halfling is the derp. Uh, I don't want to crack this Nurturing Peatland because I have this cord in my hand. I'm going to want all the mana yet that I'm going to need. I want all of the manas. So we'll wait till later to cord. Or we're not going to crack the Peatland, that is. I really wish we had a Bowmaster here. Pop, pop, zap them. Wish we had the Bowmaster. Oh. No, it's I don't think it's close. I think evolution is still we still want evolution as a four of. I don't know. I I don't know. We haven't really played with it enough. Maybe, but like The problem is like right now, what would a cauldron do? Like attack their graveyard? Okay. Yogmoth versus Grist here. Mm. Let's put mm. Let's play the Grist. Let's start getting permanence on the board. This might be a stern scolding. Grist can't get pierced either. Stern scolding gets them both. They don't have. All right. All right. I just want permanence on the board, so when I get to Yog, Like, the problem is, if you play a Yogmoth naked against this deck, they'll just unholy heat it, and that'll be that. Now we have, like... You want and need a board presence with Yogmoth to make it better. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about Grist. Grist cannot be spell-pierced. Can't be force and negationed. Yeah, I think that's where I'm at, too, with Neon Lights. It's just like... I mean, obviously you don't want Evolution against the 4 million Counterspell Blue-Red deck. Where you have to just tap out Main Phase. But against the vast majority of decks. Alright, here comes... Alright, this is good for us. When you Evolution... You knew Expressive Iteration, when you're behind like this, it's very good for us. Very good for us. Incredibly good for us. Because they're not deploying a threat. They're not adding to the board. We just get to pick at them. Poke them with our little green... With our little green idiots, we get to poke them and poke them and poke them and poke them and poke them. Gris can be Stern Scolding. Every card in the deck can be Stern Scolding. Which sucks. Stern Scolding is one of the worst cards for Yawgmoth that they've printed in a very long time. But luckily, it's not played that much. People aren't, like, jamming it in everything yet, thankfully. But it is very good against Yogmoth. Unfortunately. Ugh. That's so annoying. I mean, they two for one themselves to do this. They only have two cards left. Here comes Murktide. Okay, so we can resolve Yogmoth here. But I think it's just better. I think it would just be better to just... I honestly think it's better just to cord for a Grist. Grist, kill this. Right? Like, we can play the Yog, but this is just... I think, I think it's just too clean to go cord... Grist, kill this, attack for four. It's just got to be too strong. Yeah, I mean, if they have a force negation plus blue card, what are you going to do? If they have exactly perfect, what are you going to do? But this 8-8 eight eight Murktide is going to be a problem. Murder. Pop. Mm 
Well, the problem is if we cauldron the grist, we still have to, like, plus our dudes. Like, we do want to draw a cauldron. For sure we want to draw a cauldron. I would like to draw a cauldron. Yeah, grist on cauldron is like the reason to play it. I'm going to brew a bug Asmo deck that plays like Emery and Cauldron and stuff. I'm gonna probably have that ready for tomorrow. But tomorrow we're gonna play Grist, Emery, Asmo, Cauldron. And a bunch of cool stuff. Alright, so they'll name Grist here, and then we'll just play the Yogg. Two right now. Two right meow. Okay, so let's thought these. What is in your hand? Uh, you can not have that. Uh, one, two. Double black. Boop. Bop. Bop. Um, let's see, we have a land drop to make, so we can go shoot this into this, refresh draw, we have two draws for a land drop. We don't need to attack with this first, because this is attacking at four anyway, so let's hit our land drop here. Let's look for our land drop. Oh, ho, ho, if we hit a land drop, oh baby. Sack you. Uh, land drop, please. Oh, yes. All right. So now we do you. Uh, let's get in our attack in for four. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. This is how you beat this deck is have them have a shitty hand. Um, Jim of the Gris, Cauldron, Metallic Mimic combo. No. So Mimic would be every creature comes into play with a plus one plus one counter. So then you'd name Insect. And then when you plussed your Grist Insect, you'd get another Grit. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Because you'd go, you'd go Metallic Mimic. You'd name Insect. You'd put Grist in the graveyard. You'd Cauldra it. You'd plus. You'd get an Insect. That Insect would have a plus one plus one counter on it. Then you could activate that one, and you get infinite plus one plus one counters. Not infinite, but... Well, the reason we only have two Bowmasters is we were trying to make room for all four copies of all the Undying creatures with the plus one plus one counters. I do know that these have plus one plus one counters, but it's like, we only have so much space in the deck, you know? And Bowmaster does not help you with comboing, right? That's pretty sweet. We'll probably do that tomorrow. We'll probably do cool stuff tomorrow. Okay, can we keep this hand? On one hand, it has Agatha's and cool stuff. <laughs> it's a May, right? It is a May. So eventually we just choose not to activate an insect. Okay, so let's... If we go turn one and they kill our guy, we just lose. That is what you're saying. Okay, I can keep this. We can keep this. We'll put back cord. We're pretty far off from getting cord to be good. We kind of need the mana to set up. All right, we'll put back cord. Can ship a call? What do you mean? What does that mean, friend? All right, turn one forest. Halfling. High arc. So you can Agatha's a Yogg and turn on it. Yes. It's incredibly powerful. You can have a Yogmoth, a Grist. So like you can go, you can turn, if you're playing Yogmoth, you can turn like anything with a counter into a Grist, a Yogmoth, a Wall of Roots, a High Arc, a Halfling, and a Dryad Arbor. So you can like soup up something. To have all these abilities. Which is pretty cool. Because they're going to kill our board and we're going to sit with a thing that... Like, how... 
How many turns do you think it's going to be before we can actually cord for something that's relevant? Right? We're looking at... We're looking at, you know, how many turns of them killing all our creatures. They're probably bringing in multiple copies of Fury and that gets hit by a Spell Pierce. So, I don't see the point of keeping a cord in my hand to get to try and, you know... Like, this is really good for us. Like, we're pretty far off from casting this in a productive way. Right? Like, if they... If they start killing this, like, we're still looking at, we're looking at cord for f two next turn. That's if this lives. Which this, this Bowmaster's probably not going to live. I'd much rather have a, a hand full of mana so we can cast our spells before, like, before a cord, right? Because they're, they're just going to kill our Bowmaster here. You know, because they, they re literally revealed an unholy heat. So. So now we're looking at cord for one on turn three. This is our first chance to cast a cord and we're looking at cord for one. I will take your Murktide region, please. Counterspell, Purdan, Dutabolt. Well, let's take the Counterspell. And let's play the halfling. Let's hide the green from the swamp. Let's hide the green from this. And they're going to kill this halfling. So even next turn, on turn four, we're just going to have cord for two. Let me change for two volcanic constriction to untap only artifact creatures. There's a bunch of stuff you can do. With it. Alright, so they're using their preordain. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is they play so many redundant copies of Bolt. Right? They're going to probably Bolt the Halfling. Oh, they're preordaining. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bolt the Halfling. All right. So it's now turn five, right? And we only have cord for two. Because they've killed one, two, three, four of our creatures, right? So that's why I bought them cord. It's turn five, and it's and we're where? We can cord for a Bowmaster. Maybe. That doesn't even seem that good. I, I'm just going to play this Blood Artist and attack. That's why I bought them cord. Unless you have Wall of Roots, Cord goes way, way down. We have to hope they don't have Murktide plus Counterspell. Well, Bowmasters would have been pretty good here, but then they just don't cast that. There's going to be some busted combos. Like, you can have Walking Ballista on your thing, plus you could... There's so much you can do. A DRC, and they have one card in their hand. Okay, so... We can cord for an Endurance. Yeah, Cauldron's very strong. Cauldron is very strong. There's a lot of potential there. Uh, so we can cord for Endurance. I think it is Favored versus Murktide. I think it's very big underdog versus rhinos. And I think that um, the matchup versus scam was 50-50. But Bowmasters really, really made it a little bit more lopsided in scam's favor. Because Bowmaster was very good. So my take would be uh, Bowmaster. Yeah. I think I'm going to cord now. I think I'm going to cord for... I'm going to cord for uh, endurance. I think that's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to cord for an endurance. Didn't matter. Did not matter. That sucks. I 
They top the card. So this is probably Elvis Chorus over. It's I mean Elvis Elvin Chorus. I have not tried, but oh, all right. Well, here's the new hotness. Let's see what it does for us. One, two. Agatha's Cauldron. We're playing it first so it doesn't get spell pierced. So, all right, let's take a look at their graveyard. First off, they have five types. So they have one, two. They have two creatures. So I guess we're going to go. We could give our guys mana ability, which isn't that great. I think I'm going to Agatha's. I think I'm going to eat their Murktide Regent. And I'm going to put a counter on this, and I'm going to attack for two. And I'm going to play the Strangler Geist. All right, let's go eat the Murktide. Too much text makes me dizzy. Put this on this. Uh, then we go one, two, play this. Now we're attacking for four, and the race is on. I guess we could get wrecked by a subtlety here, but it is what it is. We have to put a clock on them. I'm glad we got that out of their hand, though. Imagine if we drew a Yawgmoth and they subtletied us. Yeah, that card's pretty good. You can go Pure Steel Marrow with that. Someone yesterday was working on a deck like that. Where they were using Pure Steel Marrow. Alright, so we need to draw a Grist here or something. They're tagging us for 6. We go to 10. Can you just stop drawing busted spells? What the fuck is this? They drew a Fury? Oh my god. Well, that sucks. We're dead to this. We are super dead to this. Um... Super dead to these cards. What the hell is Trilobite? What set is that from? That card's gotta be... That card's gotta be... Uh, um, We're dead. We're so dead. So... This is an example of why this card's bad, right? We... It's just... Right? It's just does not help your board. It's so situational... So that I don't think it's going to be good, right? Uh, GG's. I guess we can chump here. We could chump here and then exile. I guess they only have one more creature left. And then they only have one land. So I guess we could block, exile the thing, put a counter on this. Alright, let's exile there this. I think my final verdict is going to be it's just too inconsistent. So we're going to have to block here, right? We're going to have to block here. They have to draw a brick. We take six, we go to four. Then we have to draw an endurance. So we block here. All right, so now we need them to brick. Jeez. GG's. Alright. I mean, this card... Not gonna cut it. This one's just not gonna cut it. Alright, we'll keep... We'll keep the Agathas here. Oh, it's just terrible. That does not solve the problem that Yawgmoth has. And the problem that Yawgmoth has is Fury. And that's pretty much it. Fury and Endurance. Fury and, like, modernizes two cards. Going Aether Vial and Saga doesn't... No, it's just Fury. Fury, like, keeping the board clear. And, like, if you put a Yawgmoth in play for an Aether Vial... It's not going to do anything unless you have a board. Right? Like, the strength of Yawgmoth is the board 
presence. Like, if you play a Yawgmoth, if you violin, if you play a, a, a violin one, and then you do nothing, but then you play a Yawgmoth on four, like, it's gonna do nothing, because you need that board presence with Yawgmoth to do anything. Does that make sense? Like, Yawgmoth is a board presence deck. You need to just put on the board, and 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 put on the board. That's how Yawgmoth wins. When you when you take away putting stuff on the board, it's not going to win. Right? So, like, I've tried Aether Vial in the past. And the problem is, Aether Vial doesn't work with Yawgmoth. Yeah, but, like, those creatures don't help you with Yawgmoth. They're just fodder for Yawgmoth. They, they're not going to combo... You're not going to combo win... With anything you get from Saga. And you're not going to combo win. Um, I mean you can combo win with Aether Vial. But those cards don't. They're not part of the combo. If that makes sense. You need. Then you need them plus Yawgmoth plus combo cards. See now I'm just. Now this Agatha just looks ridiculous. Just absolutely foolish looking. So we have to block here. Oh, cool. They have Bowmasters. Yeah, see? Like, cool, cool Agatha's Cauldrons. Okay. Okay. And it'd be the same concept, right? If we play turn one Vile, the Vile would be on two, right? Vile would be on one right now, and we'd be murdered. So, uh... We gotta, uh, I guess we'll leave it in for testing, but the way to beat Scam, I've found, is like this. Uh, cut cards like this, cut cards like this, cut, uh, we'll cut these two. It's very hard, it's very hard to get a board to make quarter calling good against them. Snatching Voidwalker with Cauldron. But the problem is you can't get... You don't... Their stuff doesn't get Void Counters, right? That's the problem. Is like their stuff doesn't get the Void Counters. And we got run over because they had Turn 1 Ragavan. They had unchecked Turn 1 Ragavan. And our deck of Young Wolves didn't really... We're cutting High Arcs because of Bowmaster. Yeah. This is just too inconsistent. It might be good as a one of out of the sideboard, but if only we had drawn a third Galdrin, I know, right? It is cool. It does have cool effects, but I think you need a, a, a focus deck that can really abuse this more. I think you want to play this card with Emery. I think you want to play this card with like an Asmo Emery shell. Like Asmo Emery um Walking Ballistas. Stuff like that. Alright, once again, we can't keep this hand. Uh shitty. <laughs> shitty. I think you saw how it oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Alright, I keep both hands. What goes back? We'll put back you. And we'll put back... This is our one keepable hand. I guess we'll put back Scavenging Ooze. Although it's so good against them. So we'll go turn one High Arc. And hopefully we can turn to a Grist. Yup. If well, like it doesn't draw a card. I think maybe you want it in an insect deck too. You want to play like Grist, Emery's, Asmos, Metallic Mimics. Just some kind of like bug Asmo deck with Mimics or with Cauldrons. I think that's where you want to be. Because that lets you play. Oh my god. That lets you play um, the cookbook so you can discard stuff. So you could discard stuff to the cookbook and then 
get and then use the cauldron to get the cards back. Oh, cool. Oh, by the way, it's really cool that they just gave Scam a straight upgrade. So Not Dead After All is just a straight uh, Scam upgrade because it's Wicked Roll, which means it doesn't have plus one, plus one counters. So it means you can play Undying Evil again, and when this thing dies, you gain one life. This is why you cut cords against this deck, right? Because look at look at how cord sucks against them. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? Just sit here and do nothing and die? Yeah, and it deals one damage to you, so they just get a straight upgrade. It's good to see Wizards of the Coast just power creeping a deck that's already dumb. Uh, uh yep. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you could do with it. Like, I don't know if I would need to use this Court of Calling here. Now, Agatha's would be really good here. Alright, I don't want a Cord for zero here. I want to draw Agatha's. Cool, they're going to kill my guy. Neat. They're going to terminate my High Arc. Alright, we're dead here. Okay, alright. I think, I think we have solved the issue. I think that it does not help with the problems that the deck already has, and it's very inconsistent. If you draw it at the wrong time, it doesn't do anything. It could maybe be a sideboard card. It could maybe be a sideboard card against certain decks, like Murktide. But I don't think it belongs in the main deck. I think one of these in the sideboard is probably fine. Uh, you could play it as a graveyard hate card. You could play it as a shitty relic of Progenus. But the that's the fundamental problem. Is that in sideboard games, your opponent is already attacking your Yawgmoth graveyard. So like you're playing a card that relies on your graveyard when your opponent's already attacking the graveyard. Yeah, yep. Exactly what Knacker's saying. It's fun, but you have to jump through a lot of hoops, and in the modern format, you don't have time to do that. Right? You just get dunked on. You just get absolutely cranked on by this card. So, Alright, that's it for Yawgmoth for now. So, I'm going to give you guys a poll. So, let's be done with Yawgmoth. Uh, stop the yog.